Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Um, glory to God. First Samuel chapter 3, we read the whole chapter this morning and talking about the, how to develop spiritual sensitivity. Our first point this morning was minister unto the Lord. And we did make some statements, I know probably were uh, whatever, but you know the... The fact of the matter is, if you study the, the, the language words, and even hear a minister, doesn't just mean to worship the Lord. And so we take a lot of people who do worship, take these scriptures and use them, um, and it's all about worshiping the Lord. And that, it is, that is a part. It's not the whole. And so serving the Lord is also part of ministering to the Lord, doing his service. Amen? And we've got a lot of people who just want to, you know, Put on hill songs and sing all day, but don't want to come clean the church. And Samuel was ministering unto the Lord before Eli. He was lighting, he was putting oil in the candles. Hello? He was making sure everything was right around the, around the place for Eli, taking care of stuff. Wasn't just sitting around with his harp singing, you know, uh, Kumbaya, my Lord. He was doing something. All right. And so we talked about this one. The first way to develop spiritual sensitivity is to wait on and serve and minister to the Lord. All right. I'm going to tell you something. God can speak to you while you're doing something for him. You don't have to be somewhere, you know, on a mountaintop with a harp, you know, and, and, and hear, the, hear the brush of angels wings. I'm not, not, I like the song, okay. I'm not, but, but, you know, we, we, can, we, get, we can get spiritually weird particularly of the charismatic Pentecostal bunch. I'm in both circles. I'm, I'm talking to me. We can get weird and, and start thinking, well, I've got that, you know, I remember, you know, when I first got saved, I had, I, had a, I had a set of praying hands I had done in vacation Bible school when I was a kid. They were on, a, on their own like a burlap thing, and they were, they were plaster of Paris, and you had painted them and attached them and put them in a frame. And I had the, the old what, the inspiration picture of Jesus, you know, the wimpy Jesus, you know, and I, and I set that up in a little place, and I had the big picture of Jesus. I had the praying hands at the right angle to pray to Jesus. I had candles. Now you had to get there to get in the spirit. Now you can get in the spirit in rush hour. As a matter of fact, most of you probably need to get into the spirit during rush hour. Hello. It'll keep you out of sin. <laughs> Amen. You know, we, but we get weird. I remember we were praying one time. We were over at someone's uh, uh, place, and there was, a, there was a lot of us young people who just gotten saved, and uh, the candle burned down one side. And somebody went, oh, it's a sign from God. No, it was a vent. The air for the vent was blowing the, fire, the flame one direction. They tried to make it out. So we could get so weird. Are you here? I, I, I felt something. Woo! You better, you better not go by goosebumps. Now, we go, we go where they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen? So we don't need to get weird. No, we need to be spiritual, but we don't need to be weird. They're not, they're not synonymous terms. As a matter of fact, if you really go study out, a lot of times people that are weird really aren't spiritual. A lot of people I've met, I've been in this for a long time, folks, and I've met a lot of people, and I've been around a lot of people, and I've ministered in front of a lot of people, and I've seen some stuff. That's why I use the term granola Christian. Fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Are y'all here? And we don't need any granola Christians. We need, we need stable Christians. Amen? So, um, back over here, the first step to being sensitive to the, or, or being developing spiritual sensitivity is ministering unto the Lord. Number two, here's a biggie. Are you ready? Can I get a drum roll, please? I need Dick with Bob out there. He just put a drum roll for me when I need him. Listen to those who are older than you in the Lord and know God's voice. It's amazing how many young people come along, get turned on the Lord, and I'm talking about young Christians, not necessarily young people. Young Christians come on and think they know everything and the old guys don't know anything. 
There was a, there was a Raymond Bible Training Center instructor teaching one day, uh, filling in the class for Dad Hagen. And one of the kids uh, just kind of said loud and so enough people heard him that, they, that you know, it got kind of out that he had said it. He said, uh, oh, no, it wasn't. It, it was, it was uh, Dad had been gone a lot on, on, on uh, traveling on crusades and got back. It was his first time he had been able to get to his class during that, that, mark, that period, the, the, the uh, nine-week period. And uh, one of the other instructors had been filled in for him. And uh, Dad was up there ministering, and this kid goes, who's this old guy? Get him out of here and bring the other guy back. Now, who do you think that instructor learned everything from? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Brother Bill, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to fix that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep. We, you, it's amazing how people think, uh, oh, you're just an old fuddy dud. You don't know anything. Let me tell you something. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people who came along in the charismatic re renewal and threw the baby out with the bathwater. The Pentecostals knew a lot about the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me Lester Summerall didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me that C.M. Ward didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me that Dad Hagen didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost and that you young whippersnappers, because you got some, you know, you got baptized with the Holy Ghost over in your liturgical church, think you know everything. You didn't know anything. They wouldn't throw them all out. We got, we got the hole on everything. We're going to prophesy all the time. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go to every hospital and empty it out. Well, if that were so, then why didn't Jesus empty out Solomon's porches? That went over big. As a matter of fact, he was just walking through there, and the spirit, he, had a, he, had a, he had a manifestation of the Holy Ghost in his ministry. He stopped the one guy and said, will you be made whole? He said, well, sir, you know, I, I've, been here, you know I've been here a long time, and uh, every time I try to get down there when the water's troubled, you know, somebody gets in before me. He didn't ask him why had you been healed. He said, will you be healed? He said, take up your bed and walk, and he got healed and didn't minister to anybody else there. Now, if the Son of God, the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, operating under a covenant ministry in the earth, did not go and empty out the whole place, you're not going to go and empty out the hospital. See how foolish we can get? Now, we're to lay hands on the sick, but you've got to understand, there, there are parameters, and that one of them is, they want it. You can't ever lay hands on folks who don't want to be healed. Who aren't interested, who don't believe. God's, you just can't make God heal somebody who don't want to be healed. Who doesn't believe in it. Are you here? That would never be. You can't get people saved who don't want. You know, the Bible says, you know, go preach the gospel. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. Then it say you're going to make you're going to get them all saved. If we just love everybody, they're all going to get saved because love never fails. That's not what it says in the Greek. Amen. Love, love doesn't, and it's not a failure of love if they don't get saved. That's not the failure of love anyway. Hello? If you, if you act in love, your love toward them didn't fail in the fact that it brought the message to them. But the fact that they don't get saved doesn't mean that love didn't do its part. Love shared the truth. So, we need to listen to people who have walked with the Lord long. I'll tell you, you can learn something from folks that don't believe everything you believe. There's wisdom. I remember when Belinda was in the hospital with, uh, after Ben with uh, the, all the stuff going on. There was a, I was, we were, I was up there at the, uh, when the area me and Billy had scripture wars. I was recovering. And uh, <laughs> for the next round, <laughs> we caught a ceasefire so we could come back and do it again. I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, there's an old Presbyterian minister up there. He's retired and come back to a church as, as a hospital minister. Now, you know, some of, the, some of your denominational churches do things different. But he had, he had been, in, been in the ministry a number of years, retired, and just went back and was, it, was, it was a volunteer staff as a hospital minister. And I sat there and talked to him for about an hour and a half one day. You know, I learned some things from him. No, I didn't learn anything about being baptized in the Holy Ghost from him. I didn't even learn anything really from him about laying hands on the sick and having them recover and, you know, and, and, and doing what the Lord Jesus Christ commanded the church to go lay hands on the sick. But I did learn some things about uh, how to care for the flock. Amen? How, how to have, the, have the, the care for them, how to be able to minister in difficult situations. I learned some stuff from that guy. 
They've been in the ministry 50 years. You got to be able to. And so you young folks need to learn. You younger people, you young people in ministry need to learn. You can learn something from somebody that's gone down the road ahead of you. Amen. We love your zeal. But let, let the wisdom, now not, not compromise, not put the fire out, but let wisdom temper it into a fine two-edged sword that's useful for the kingdom. Amen. <clears throat> Remember verse 9 it says, go, go lie down, shall be with the Lord. He shall call thee, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear us. And what happened? Eli recognized it was the voice of God. Hebrews 13, 7 says, obey. <laughs> That's a four-letter word in this new, this new teaching out there today. You know, that new hyper, mm -hmm, um, that you don't have to obey anybody. Obey them that have the rule over you. And somebody tell me, I don't have to obey anybody. And submit yourselves. Two of the things they told me they didn't have to do right here in this verse, God tells you to do. For they watch for your souls. They must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. 1 Peter 5, 5, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Wow. That old guy don't know nothing. He's, been, you know, he's just been in the way for 50 years. A lot of times these statements we come up with just are, are statements out of arrogance. Hello. I know people can get off track and people do this, but I'm even Eli, in his state, God used him to direct Samuel. Eli won't, won't too swift right there. He was old and tired, didn't want to be put upon. Or he had a judgment pronounced over his household. Are you here? Are you here? And he still had wisdom from heaven for Samuel. Wow. I said, wow. That went over big. One, one person out there in Tulsa a number of years ago got upset with uh, Brother Hagan about something. Left the ministry, went out, they were going to do their own thing, did their own thing for a couple of years. I don't know if they pastored a church or they traveled, whatever, but they, they came back for a couple of years and came back, you know, they realized <laughs> they'd messed up. And uh, went to Pastor Hagan and said, you know, is there a place for me? He said, I don't know, well, I'll, I'll talk to Dad. They worked on it, you know, they, and they finally called him and said, we got a place for you. He said, but Dad wants to talk to you first. Let me say something here. We need to listen to those over us in the Lord. They may not agree with everything they say. And in this, let me say this. When you're with someone and you're working in their ministry and you're helping them and you do, don't agree with it, you're not going to agree with everything they do. You're going to think you know better. And half the time you didn't. You really didn't. But, but, but maintain the proper integrity. Keep the right heart. Let God use them to speak into your life. And then if, it's, if it comes to the, the right time for you to move on, let God do it. Yeah. And let it be done with, with, uh, with integrity. And let it be done in a way that blesses everybody. Are you here? You're going home. Yeah. They came back. Dad wanted to talk to him, brought him into the office and looked at him. He's standing across the desk, pointed his finger and said, there are things I couldn't do because you left me. End of conversation. They're still there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know? See, we, we, we kind of need to understand that listening to those who are older than us in the Lord. There's wisdom there. May not agree with everything they say, but there's wisdom there. I remember um, the church that we came from. You know, we, we didn't always agree. There's some things that, you know, that I didn't agree about, but that doesn't matter. They're, they're good. They were good, solid people of God. Amen. Still there. Still got a, got a wonderful church doing wonderful work for Jesus. We love them. Thank God, thank God for them. Thank God for their place. And, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of the things I thought that I, I knew when I, when I left, and listen, let me tell you something. Even in the midst of the most difficult times, when, when everything in you wanted to leave, I didn't leave. And I didn't stay and subvert the church in the process. Now let me say something. There's a lot of people stay and they have an agenda to make it go down so they can prove they were right. Now, there's another guy there about the same time I was, and he'd go around and tell people, say, oh, I don't agree with Pastor so-and-so about such and such. He said, I don't either, but I can't do anything about it. That's what he'd tell the people. Start building his own following. I, can't, I don't agree with him either, but I can't do anything about it. 
I had somebody come to me one day and said, said, if you'll start a church, I'll go with you. I said, if I ever start a church, it'll be so far away, you can't go with me. You're not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not here to hurt this church. Now, I'm not bragging on me. I'm talking about you've got to do things right. And if you're going to be successful in the things of God and you're going to be spiritually sensitive, you can't leave collateral damage on your way all the way through your life. Hello. Because eventually it will catch up with you. At some point in time, we were listening. Uh, how many of you saw my, my um, share from Bob Yanyan the other day? Are you a plotter? Not one single hand. Well, Janie shared it first, then I shared it. Go back and look. It's talking about the people who just keep going, who just don't quit, who aren't, who aren't shooting stars, who aren't rising, you know, on, on the heels of a rocket, and they're just shooting to the top, and everybody just adores them. He, went to, he, he was a, a charter class from our Bible school. Now, they started out with 58. They graduated 34 that first year. Of the 34, he is the only one that did not have a schedule full or a full-time position at a church. In other words, traveling ministry schedule full or a um, position at a church. Of the 34, 33 had full-time positions given to them as, as associates or youth or something, or the other ones had, had already filled up their itinerary for a traveling ministry. He went on, did some other things. You know, get, did some more training, working in a church, ended up being the dean at, at, at our school and some other things. Went to their 10th class reunion. And of that 34, that 33, well, the 34 included him there because he was in full-time ministry. Of the 34, only 10 were still in ministry. So you can leave collateral damage as you go through life. You can leave a wake of destruction all in the guise that I'm doing everything right and I got it all and I know everything. But if we're going to do things for God, you can't just come into churches and tear churches up because it doesn't go the way you want it to go. Come on now. We got a job to do for Jesus. This church is supposed to be doing certain things and there are people who've left and who are supposed to be here and they may not ever come back, but they were supposed to be here. They're supposed to be a part of what God had for us. And there were things we, wouldn't, we hadn't been able to do because they left. We were just having, we're having to wait for God to arrange it to get the right people in here to fill that hole and that void so we can do some certain things. Some of it's financial. Some of it's, it's, some of it's ministerial. You need certain people with you. Some of it I've just had to raise my, my own children, raise them up, and put them in ministry. Well, they're, they're kind of young. They're not really, they're, they're, just listen. Stay with us. I said, stay with us. You watch them grow. Watch them flourish. Those of, you, those of you who've got youth over there right now probably hearing good reports. We're hearing good reports about what's going on over there. Hallelujah. You know, we were told they weren't ready for it by somebody. You know, they're not, they're not ready. They're not equipped. They need to spend more time serving. Jessie's 20, 27. She's been in the, serving in the ministry since she was born, been to Ramah, and she's not ready? That's what I was told. They're, she's not ready for that. By somebody, they're not in our church you know, anymore, but they, that's what they told us. Well, I really don't care about your wake of destruction. Go on. We have to keep a sensitive heart for God and keep serving the Lord. Amen? Are y'all here? You go home. And stay steady even when the things aren't really good. So we were in our church, and, and, and you know, I was frustrated. I remember the year that I did actually, uh, I don't know how, you know, Maybe people haven't ever heard this. You know, we, we've shared this in the past. I remember one day my pastor came to me in, at, at work, and I was working, you know, we well, all know I was working at the, 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 bar, the Parker's Barbecue, frying chicken, hallelujah, slinging, slinging chickens and throwing barbecue out the back door, man. Hallelujah. And he said, how much do you make? And, you know, how much notice do you have to give? I'm, I, you know, i got to pray about it some more this weekend, but we're planning on hiring you. I praise God the day has come. My day has come. I mean, it's like Hallelujah. Man, I'm, and you're talking about cloud nine. You're, you're caught lot ready to rock. I'm ready to go tell the boss, I, I am leaving in two weeks. Hallelujah. I'll come help you cater some parties here and there, but I'm out the door, Jack. Don't look back no more, no more. I'm hallelujah. So the next week on Monday or Tuesday, he comes back and says, hey, can I talk to you? So I go outside. He said, look. He said, I, I know I told you I was going to hire you, but I was on the platform on Sunday, and I heard the Lord say, why haven't you, hired so, why haven't you thought about so-and-so? And I hired him. 
Sunday afternoon, after the morning service. They hired him. Man, you're talking about, now listen, was he, was he wrong? That, 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 wouldn't, that wouldn't be relevant in anything. He believes he heard from heaven. He's got to obey what he believes he heard from heaven. It doesn't matter if I think it's right or wrong, does it? Why? Because he's the leader. I said he's the leader. He believes he's heard from heaven. And you know what? I'm telling you, it was tough. I had to leave work. I went home and cried. Fell across the bed and cried. I mean, you know, I was just all, you know, one, one Friday you're excited, Monday you're shot down. I was, I mean, not shot down. I mean, I was, I mean, I had an internal explosion. Boom. Yeah. And I just cried and wept across the bed. And, and I, it took me a little time. It did take me some time. But you know what? It took me some time because I didn't put my trust in the fact that, that he was sent by God. I was sent there. <clears throat> and I had to follow even, when I, even if I didn't agree with what decision they made. And that was, you know, that's what I had to do. That was my responsibility was to be able to stay submitted and listen to the one over me in the Lord even if I didn't agree with it. So it took me some time to get there. I had to, I had to pray that thing out. I had to work through that. And that's when people start coming to you and saying, I'll, if you'll start church, I'll go with you. People say, I can't believe he hired him instead of you. I mean, you know, the devil would just send emissaries to you to mess you up. Here I am struggling, trying to overcome this, you know, and, and keep the right attitude, and then emissaries show up. I can't believe he did that. I can't understand why he hired him instead of you. I believe you're the right, they tell you, I believe you're the right person for the job. Wow, that's all I needed to hear. Are you here? H-E-R-E. -E. Is that what I need? I didn't need to hear that. What I needed was people come and say, you know, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I can tell you this. You could trust that, that the, the leadership will hear from heaven, and if there's mistakes made, they can make adjustments and go on, and you just stay faithful. And that's what, that's what happened when Buddy Harrison came. He got me off by myself. He said, son, you're, you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. You just stay steady. Good word of encouragement. But see, that's not what the devil sent people to tell me. He sent them to tell me that, you know, I just don't understand why he did that. He told other ministers in town that knew about it. He just don't understand why he did that. And it was getting back to me. Hello? This fuel to the fire of, of discouragement and dis, you know, disgruntledness. And I remember I, I went to Janie at Christmas because I, I, I had reached a state of frustration. You know? I wanted, I wanted to be in full-time ministry. Not for the glory of ministry, that's, but I, I, when you have a call and it burns, you want to be there. Do you understand that? And you can get frustrated getting there. It's, you know, sometimes you tell your kids stuff, say, now look, trust mom and daddy. Then when you get on the other side of this particular issue in your life and you look back, you'll know we were right, but you can't see it right now. Let me know what I'm talking about. You're, you're trying to, you know from experience what they're experiencing, and you know the outcome if they'll stay steady and listen to you, and when they get there, when they get on the other side, they'll look back and they'll know you were right. But they can't see that you're right right now. All they know is that they're, what the frustration they're dealing with in life. Mom and daddy have been there, son. Mom and daddy have been there, sweetheart. We know what you're going through. Trust me. What's, yeah, have faith that what I'm saying is right. And the Lord will tell you, I know you're frustrated, but have faith. Trust me. When you get on the other side and look back, you'll understand that it wasn't that big of a deal. And so um, for about a year and a half, I dealt with this thing. It was just, it was just kind of a, you know, you're, just having, you're having to cast stuff down. Hello. Just had to cast stuff down. There's a couple of things that I don't want to go into detail about that happened that nobody really knew that they, that they didn't deliberately do or facetiously do, but happened, and it just added to it, and I just had to deal with it more. But I remember I, I looked at Janie, and I, and, and I said, look, I told the Lord last night. I, I said, honey, I told the Lord that if I sit here forever and I work at Parker's Barbecue and I do what I'm doing and, and I'm serving the Lord, then that's what I'll do forever. 
because I'm going to obey God, and I'm going to do what God said to do. They're having way too much fun over there. And it wasn't three months later that he came to me and said, we're ready to put you on staff now. Now, here's the sad thing. that's sad for us because we loved working with them. We weren't there but about another year, and then we started coming here. Um, about a year and three months, and then we came here for about five months. Is in, uh, in, uh, May, June, July, August, five months. We came and traveled back and forth from Greenville here. I, I, they, my pastor just gave us a real gracious leeway. He said, look, you know, take, take Monday off as a day off. You travel until they're on the weekends, you minister, and then you just come here. So I was getting paid there and getting offerings here. Because <laughs> Janie had just had, a, had Jessica and quit work. So our salary went in half. Yes, glory to God. You know, and, um, and then, and th so we, 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 the, I was, I'm, just, I'm sad that we didn't get to spend more years there with them. On that one side. On the other side, you know, we had to obey God. You obey God. Now, I can tell you, there were some things forged in the fire of difficulty, submitting and obeying when your flesh didn't want to, when my flesh didn't want to. My flesh wanted to run. My flesh wanted to start something. My flesh had people come in and help me to try to get to start something. It wanted Ishmael's. I don't want Ishmael's. I said, I don't want Ishmael's. I want Isaac's. Hello. The difficulty that I went through in overcoming the flesh and overcoming hurt and overcoming. Uh, listen, well, they shouldn't have done that. That's, see, that's not the point. Like I said, anybody, people are going to do stuff that you don't agree with that they believe God's telling them to do. They honestly believe it's the Lord. And it may be, you just don't think it is because it didn't work out good for you. I didn't think it was because it didn't work out good for me. It put me, it put me in a precarious, it put me in a position I didn't want to be in. Y'all hear you gone home? But see, when, when Brother Buddy came, and, he said, you know, and, and during that time, I still had, I got to spend some time uh, with some people that I wouldn't have had I left uh, uh, when, I, when I got frustrated. Uh, Lester Summerall, C.M. Ward, Dennis Burt, we've had Dennis here a number of years ago. Um, you know, Brother Buddy and Sister Pat Harrison. Got to spend some time in places with them. <clears throat> where they spoke into our lives that I wouldn't have gotten. There were deposits by the Holy Ghost made during that season that I was being forged by the fire. Because I stayed and I listened. They didn't say it was easy. I just knew it was the right thing to do. See, anybody can do easy. Are y'all here? I said anybody can do easy. It takes no effort to do, do easy. It takes no effort to stay when you've got 5,000 people and $2 million a year to work on. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Anybody could do easy. But there's nothing birthed in easy. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted 40 days of the devil. Why? Because he had to go from the, from the fullness to the power. There are things that await your life that you're going to have to see it through the tough season to see the fullness of it because God's forging some things in you while you're there. See, we don't like these kind of preaching sermons. We don't want to be forged. We want instant success. We want to pull out the box of hunger, pull out the box of hunger jack, put some water on the pot, throw some milk and some butter in it, throw them in there, whip them up. We got, a, we got mashed potatoes, baby. We don't want to peel them and cut them up and boil them for 45 minutes and, and have to mash them, you know, and work on them to get up, you know, and cook them long enough to make sure that they're not clunky. Are you here? We like to take the powder stuff and just... Whoa, praise God, instant mashed potatoes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But nothing beats the instant 
I mean, the, 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 uh, the homemade. Y'all do, y'all do know what I'm talking about, don't you? How many like ice cream? Let me tell you something. My wife makes mama slapping good homemade ice cream. And if I got, had a choice, to have, now look, it take, it's, a, it's a lot of work. She puts it together uh, usually the night before and sets it in the refrigerator so it gets really cold so that we put it in the ice, it, it, gets, it, it just works better. But then you still got to sit there and keep putting the salt in the ice, the salt in the ice, the salt in the ice, the salt in the ice. Okay, now you got to pack it with more ice, drain out the water, do it, and you got to sit there and you got to keep waiting. Man, we could have already been to the grocery store 10 times and gotten 10 half gallons. But it ain't going to taste as good. There is something about when you listen to and obey and submit. I know you think I'm off. I'm, when you obey and submit to those over you in the Lord, there is something about even when you're going through the difficult times and God is forging you for the work that he has for you. He's forging you to stand in the place that he's called you to stand in. That you're getting, you don't even know what's going on on the inner man. So that when you come to stand in that place, you're able to stand. When no one else on the planet believes in you, you're able to stand. If no one's standing by your side, you're able to stand. Because he for that's what Brother Buddy told me. During that time, he said, son, God's developing a root in you. He said, and that root's going to be a long root. He said, so when he transplant you, you can survive and withstand and stand the transplant. That if you don't, don't have that, you won't make it. I don't want to hear that. What do you want to hear? He did me wrong, and you should tell him that he did me wrong. That's what you want to hear. That's your whiny flesh. I said, that's your whiny flesh. There, there's, we've always, when you look through the Bible, everything's always been tried by fire. The fires of adversity. The fires of difficulty. The fires of the enemy against your life. But honey, I'm telling you, when you come out of that, after being purged and, 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 and forged by the fire, when you come out, there is nothing like it. How many of you can take a pane of glass and, and, and just bake glass and tap it? It'll just fall all to pieces. Hardly any effort. You, for, you forge that and temper it with fire, and it becomes a lot more, a uh, lot stronger. It takes more than just a tap to destroy it. Are you here? It's been forged with fire. How many have ever heard of wood kiln, I mean, um, fire kilned wood, lumber? Now, Lord Jesus, I'm not even going to get close. We'll finish next weekend. Now, my father-in-law had, we, we lived, when we first got married, we lived in the upstairs apartment to the, to the house. The house was built in 1907. <clears throat> it was a Victorian, real pretty Victorian house. It had the wrap porch with the stained glass you know, windows in it and that kind of stuff going up the stairwell. And um, it had been moved from across the street to the corner it was on. And on the other corner, uh, from those corners, was a tobacco warehouse. I'm telling you, that's, that's just a, you get up and walk out the first thing in the morning during the summer when they got the to cure tobacco in there and they had the doors all up. It smelled good. It just smelled really good. If you ever been down around an old tobacco warehouse that's, that's like that, you, you just, man, that's, that's, that cure tobacco smells good. You know, the, the, the bulk barns with the forced heat, just walk by one of them in the morning and turn your stomach. But this, the cured tobacco smelled good. Well, during a snowstorm of, oh, 1982 or whatever, that thing collapsed. And her dad went to the guy and said, look, I'll tear it down if I can have the wood. And they let him have it. So he took all that wood out of that old tobacco warehouse that probably been there for, for 80 or 90 years. And on it was stamped, uh, fire killed. Now, I'll be honest with you, I a whole lot rather had the, the, the western white pine. Because when you went to drive a nail in that wood kiln, if you didn't hit it just right, bing! And that nail was shot. It had to be a perfect nail hit perfectly to get it through that stuff. Termites cannot bore through this stuff. They'll lose their teeth. I'm telling you, we lost, he probably lost about a third of his nails on me trying to, dry, trying to just, especially when you had the toenail. You get in, you got 16 inches and you got to hit it. You can't get it back far enough to get it good. 
And if you miss it just a little bit, that, that nail would go, Nyeh. and you could take it and bend it back out, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Try it. Hardest wood I've ever seen. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't naturally that way. It, it became that way in the fire. Are you here? And your life, when, when you're having to obey and submit, why well, does the Bible say submit? You don't, sub, it's not hard to submit when you agree with everything. As a matter of fact, that's not submission. You know what it is? It's agreement. And if I tell Karen, say, Karen, I want you here next week, and I want you to clean the toilets for the next four weeks, and you don't want to do that, but you come and do it, you submitted. But if I say, Karen, I want you to come with your Bible ready to lead the counseling room for the next, and she, oh, yeah, I like that. That's not submission. That's, you know, or really even obedience. That's, that's agreeing. I'm agreeing with that, Pastor. That's exactly what I want to do. The first time I tell her something she doesn't want to do, that's where submission enters in. And there's going to be times in your life, well, I wish I preached this sermon, you know, before. <laughs> there's a lot of people who could have missed, missed missing God if they'd heard this and done this. There are going to be seasons that's not going to be all what you want. And all that you love. And it's all hunk of dory. And you just, woo, that's just exactly, oh, yeah, Pastor, go ahead on. Oh, I remember we had a group of people come in one time. They all came in, loved our preacher stage. And then when, then when God kind of led me to teach you something, they all left. Called me and said, where are y'all at? Well, we don't, you know, so-and-so don't like teaching. They just like preaching. So we're going to a church that has preaching. That's great. How are you going to grow? I like to preach. I'd rather preach. Why? It's more fun to have people running around the church than running out the back door. Just be honest with you. Amen. But when we learn to obey and submit to those with the rule over us, and that we can give an account for your soul with joy and not with grief, because that's unprofitable to you. Then he says, you younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, and all that be subject, and let all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Listen to this verse. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. I like, God Dunning wrote up on his, on his uh, Facebook page the other day for Dunning Ministries. He said, God is as actively at work at resisting the proud as he is giving grace to the humble. Actually, he resists the, uh, the, he resists the proud first, then he gives grace to the humble. God resisted the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. See, there's something about saying I am submitted to those that God has put me under. Now, here's what will come along. As soon as you disagree, I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be under them. Yeah, but three weeks ago, you were talking about you, you're the pastor. We, we love you. You're it. You're the hot dog. I mean, you're it. You're great. We, God's using you in our life. God spoke to us through your life, through you. You're just awesome. You're this. You're that. And then you got into a place where you're like this. Ah, you ain't, I'm not even supposed to be here. I can't walk with you anymore because we're not in agreement. Now, that's not one person. That's all kinds of people we've dealt with over the years. And all kinds of people in the church that I came out of where I was an assistant and saw all these things happen. And other pastors that I know, these things happen all the time. They happen everywhere. Um, you know, even big churches, little churches, beggar churches, these things happen all the time. You know, you know just sometimes when you're, small, when you're a smaller church, you've got a smaller congregation, it just seems like it's more effective because, you know, you know, five people walk out and you've got 50, that's 10%. Five people walk out of 500, that's not 10%. And it doesn't have the same effect on the ministry, financially and stuff. But you know what? It's still the same thing going on. Yeah. Their life is, is in peril and their, and, their, and their direction has been messed up because they got out of a place of submitting. So if you're going to be spiritually, and see, it's amazing to me that how many people can hear the voice of God tell them to leave. But they can't hear the voice of God tell them to submit and you put your flesh down and you do the right thing. Because I want to do something out of this. Now, I'm not talking about something I didn't practice. I did it. And you know what? Because we did it right, and because the Lord spoke and said it's time for us to move, and because my pastor and, and Buddy Harrison uh, were in agreement with that, we left with good favor. 
We left in a good relationship. We left in a way that, that the taste in our mouth and in their mouth is that we love each other. And there's none of this. We, we can sit down. We don't have to sit down at the dinner and go, well, I wonder if they ever, ever found out I said this and this. Or, you know, I really don't like being here because I'm really still mad about them about this. You can, you can sit and have fellowship, and it's good. Amen. That's the way it should be in life. And it, make, it, it, it keeps you from getting off track. There's more for me to share along these lines. I'm, I'm, the Lord led me over here. Now, if it's for you, if it's for the people on the Internet, but that, praise God. It's for somebody. And I say, here, here's what a lot of people do. You'll take what I said tonight, and they'll go, he was preaching about me. Maybe I was. But not on purpose or in the arrogance. Maybe it was the Holy Ghost trying to arrest you so that you can make corrections so that you don't, don't end up in destruction. And that went over big. Not, it wasn't planned to be. You don't plan to go after somebody. But sometimes you say stuff and it's, it's just, it, it is what it is. You know, there's things you're going to preach that no matter how you preach it, you're going to be preaching to somebody or about somebody uh, because it hits them between the eyeballs. Just man a woman up. Hello. If it hits you that way, repent and get it right. Now, because I had some attitude, we, we were at a place in the church a number of years ago. We, we, I, Jamie and I just packed stuff up. We drove down to Green. We met with our, our pastor and we said, we got to talk to you. And we just felt like there were some things that we did while we were there. Even in walking, all the integrity we knew how to walk here, we felt like there were some things we did we didn't do right. And we just want to say, look, we, we forgive us. There's some things we did here when we were here. We don't think we did them right. And we want, you, we want your forgiveness and your blessing. We did that. Amen. That's fine. And it wasn't big. It was, it was attitude stuff probably more than anything. We just had a sense we didn't do things right. As right as we should have done them. And see, one thing, I, once I'm doing everything I know that I do, do right, but then come, God comes back and goes, well, you know what? You know, remember Brother Hagin telling the story? How many have left me? How many are still here? How many are tuned in? Remember him telling the story about that time he said, you know, the Lord, the Lord's talking to him and, and, and uh, about, you know, Isaiah 119, you're eating the good land. He said, Lord, I'm not eating the good of the land. He said, I've obeyed you, I did this, and I've sacrificed that, and I've done that. He said, yeah, but you weren't willing. And Brother Hagin said, Lord, you dealt me a low blow. <laughs> he said, you've got to be willing. Obedience isn't any good without willingness. And willingness is no good without obedience. He said, all right, Lord. He said, I'm making an adjustment. I'm willing. He says, you know I'm willing. I'm the form of the devil that I'm willing. Now I expect to eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? He said, and that adjustment turned it around. See, sometimes it can be an attitude. It can be, it can be somewhere that's not in what you're doing. It's, it's what you're thinking about or your attitude about what you're doing. I was faithful to come and do this, faithful to do that, but your attitude stunk then you weren't submitted. Hello? Well, everybody else thinks you're doing great, but yeah, but the Lord knows. Your attitude stunk. You want to eat the good because you did, but you didn't want to. God said you got to want to and do to eat the good. Can I get three grunts, one help me, Jesus, and a oh my Oh my, oh uh, mm, yeah. All right, praise the Lord. Well, we're done tonight. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, 
please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.